As promised earlier on, I want to talk a little bit about the cords with the uh, upper extensions um, and the way that I think about them. So, while you might see a chord, I'll, I'll, actually I'll play this first, it'll make more sense. So let's say we have a movement that's like this. Okay, very kind of jazzy sounds. When I put that in context with chord to dito, So it's that. That's the sound I'm talking about there. If you were to write those out on paper, you'd get um, you get like an A minor seven, a flat five, and a flat nine. So A, there's A minor seven, flat five, flat nine, like that. Um, and then resolving that, you'd have. So if you were to write that out, you would end up with. There's your D7, D, F sharp, C. There's your flat 9, which is like an E. And then you would have, um, I suppose, sharp 11 is what you would call that. That's like a G sharp or an A flat on top of D. Uh, so yeah, you'd end up with D7, flat 9, sharp 11. And then back into your G minor 9 chord, okay? Just before I go any further, I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you're enjoying the video lessons I've been putting out recently on YouTube, you might take a look at the Fretboard Atlas, which is over on Truefire, which is my teaching channel. There are new videos there every month. We cover a huge range of topics. So if you'd like more videos like this, but you'd like them more in-depth and about more particular topics, check out the Fretboard Atlas over on Truefire. A slightly easier way, kind of a way that takes a bit less brain power that seems to work in most cases, is thinking of these chords the same way that you would treat target notes or approach notes in soloing. So for example, it's a really common thing when you're taking a guitar solo to have a target note, so as in, I want to end up on the A note here. How do I get there from the note that I'm on? Um, so for example, playing that, this note, this chord full of tension, we want to end up on G minor. Now if we take it back to the very basics, this is D7 going down to G minor, okay? Let's look at the lower part of the chord first. D7, that's your tritone substitution. If you don't know what that is, there's, there are plenty of videos about it, and I've made videos about it as well. It's uh, three whole tones up from the note you're on. So D7, G sharp, that's the tritone. They share the three and the seven. So they sound okay, they're a little bit interchangeable. Down to G minor. So that's our first kind of point of, of kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it, interest to our ear, I suppose. So D7 down to G minor. First step is D7, and we've got that G sharp down to D minor. That's the tritone, D7 to G minor. Then we've got the question of the flat nine here, D7 down to G minor. Then we've got this note up here. So that is in real note terms, B flat, A flat, and then A natural. Think of this as the target note. You're going one chromatic up, one chromatic down, landing on the A. So long as it resolves, your ear can make sense of it. So when I play this, it sounds like the note is going home. It sounds like it's going where it's supposed to go. It's not left unresolved. You know, it doesn't sound like this. Uh, how would you even do that? Uh, you know, that obviously doesn't sound right to your ear, whereas this does. Because we've enclosed the note. Jazz enclosures, that's another thing to take a look at as well. There's your A, note above, note below, land on the A. It's also really common to have a diatonic above and chromatic below, and then landing on the note you want, or the opposite way around. Plenty of, of ways that, that people do it. But I think about chords the same way. So when I think about a D7 chord and I hear this, I know I want to land on the A, because that'll sound nice. But if I'm putting a movement in between that chord, and I've got this G sharp as my next move, well, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go a note below instead of a note below, above, and then land where I want to land. So I don't know what the name of this chord is off the top of my head. When I work it out, I can go, yeah, it's a D7, flat 9, flat 13, and then there's your sharp 11 chord, 
and then back into your minor nine chord there. That's that's fine if you can think that way, but I don't. I look at everything moving in separate lines. So I'm looking at bum, bum, bum. But in my head, I'm still thinking D7, D7, G minor. D7, D7, G minor. So even though we've gone a long way away from standard D7, the chords and the heart of the chord isn't actually moving. So this, that F sharp and that C, what gives you that D7 sound, that is not moving at all. So it's still F sharp and C. Now it's moved. The heart of the chord is moving as the chord should change, but the extensions and the bass line are moving around. So that keeps the chord grounded. That's what tells your ear, we're still on a D7, we're still on a D7, we're on a G minor 9 now, or a G minor kind of tonality. Um, this is confusing stuff, I'm not going to lie, this is not an easy thing to follow. Um, it has taken me a long time to be able to think this way about the guitar and to be able to move chords this way. But hopefully it gives you a little bit of a window into how I'm looking at these chords as they're moving on the neck of the guitar. To give you another one, um, something I often play. Okay, similar sort of a thing, sounds a bit more chromatic. That's an A minor 9. Okay, so if we take the bottom half again, A minor, D7, G minor. That's your 2, 5, 1 in a minor key. And what happens there then, is that once we've played the two, that's the A minor 9, that, that, that B note on top, I keep the heart of the chord where it should be. So that D7 has got the F sharp and the C in it. I play the tritone straight away, so I don't even play that D in the bass. I just go straight to the G sharp. And it still feels like a, a D7. So A minor 9, down to your D7. We've got a G sharp, which is the tritone in the bass, and again we've got that flat 9, that flat 13 on top. But what's actually happening there is this note from your A minor and this note, your minor 9, are moving down one half step. That we want to end up there. So in between, the obvious choices are there and there. That's one line, that's the other line. So the difference between, you might be thinking, well, why wouldn't you just move the whole thing down? It's a sort of a more outside option. You could do it, but the difference is, instead of moving down from A minor 9 to A flat minor 9, I'm playing the heart of the chord. So I've still got, in the D7, I've still got F sharp, and I've got C. And if I have to play a note on the fifth string, I'm not gonna play C sharp. They're gonna clash completely. I'm going to play the D note. So that's why it sounds good. I'm still following the chord progression. I'm still following A minor, D7, down to G minor. But what I'm playing is A minor, the D7, G sharp in the bass, and I've moved these two notes down a half step. Okay, on the way. And then finally, there's the resolution. We're back in at home at the number one. Um, so that's that's the way I think about these chords as they're moving. It may or may not make sense as you're watching this. I hope it does make sense. Um, but I hope it helps you realize um, that you don't need to know the names of the chords that you're playing so long as you know how to resolve them. So when I'm going for any of these, uh, you know, if I mix the two we've just done there, that's a nice kind of jazzy resolution. We've got A minor 9. D7 with those upper extensions. Then we've got the G sharp. It feels like another chord change, but it's actually not. And back to your G minor. So like that. So I hope that kind of gives you an insight into where I how I think about these chords and where they're coming from. If it's total gibberish, don't worry, it'll come to you eventually. Start with small chords, okay? I probably should have said that a bit earlier in the video, but start with the A minor, D7, G minor. Then build it up to A minor 7, D7, with your tritone substitution, G minor. Then start thinking about A minor 7, D7, with your tritone, but that's a bit clashy. That sounds better. Moving musical line. 
That sounds nice. Then you just have one more string to figure out. And again. Okay, move that extension up one by one. That's just what we were working on in the video. So that's how to think about these chords. They're not completely separate chords, they're all interlinked. The heart of the chord always stays where it needs to and everything else moves around it. The bass line moves around it, the upper extensions move around it as well. But the heart of the chord, when I play a D7, I need to hear an F sharp and a C because if I don't, my head doesn't tell me that it's a D7. It'll tell me that it feels like a different chord instead. So I hope that was all useful. Let me know if it is. If it's not, tell me exactly where you're stuck and I will help you as best that I can to understand where all of these chords are fitting in together.